G'day folks, Rod Moore here. Welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Got a really great little episode for you this week. This week we're going to do one of my favourite subjects, which is Monet's home in Giverny. I uh, spent a bit of time in, uh, at Monet's home there and uh, really loved it. Took thousands of photos. And this is one of the paintings that I've done from there. It's an oil painting. And you can see Monet's home there and the water lily and the reflection in the uh, water there. It's a beautiful subject to paint. We're going to do a version of this. We're going to simplify it down a little bit, make it an easy beginner painting so you can follow along. But at the end of today's episode, you'll be able to do a, uh, a beautiful rendition of Monet's home like this situated in his property in Giverny and it's a beautiful painting to do and I know you're going to love it. So let's get busy painting folks. Okay, so this is the photo that I took when I was at Monet's home in Giverny in France. Um, it was quite a nice day, blue skies, and we spent the whole day there walking around his uh, beautiful property. So as always with the more method of painting, we're going to start off with step one, which is to get our drawing in, just mapping in our big shapes um, and starting to look at our values, placement and so on. I always start off with alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue and uh, a small flat brush and swish it around in some water. And what I want is just to make a little puddle of that paint there just as a dark for drawing with. And I want that to be fairly thin and loose. Um, so I use a little bit of water for that. It's probably the only time I really add uh, much water into the paints with acrylics. Pop that to one side. So it's all about big shapes at this stage and um, the embankment for the um, for the lake here is it's kind of curved like that. And uh, the positioning of the house, I'll get that in next. So it's just below the half, no, it'd be just over the halfway mark. Actually, it's around about halfway, which is probably how I've drawn it. Um, so the, the house comes in from the side there. It's got the roof, and we've got walls, and we've got shutters and things. There's a lovely chimney there. Pretty much, I'll leave a little bit of space for the sky to poke through there. But this willow tree pretty much hangs down there. We've got extra darks in through here. Okay, so all of this is a dark with some highlights over the top of it. And then that extends uh, sort of in through there into the water. Okay. Now the water, a lot of people get confused by how to approach the water. Um, but really it's just, we, if you just focus on that big main uh, willow tree, it's gonna all reflect in there. And we've got some other reflections in here and then leave plenty of space in there for the blue sky. It's a very complex subject if you look at all the details, right? So don't look at the details. <laughs> it becomes a lot easier. Just look for well, what are the big shapes? So we've got this one big shape through here, which we're just going to mass that in with a dark. We've got another big shape here with the willow tree. Okay, so that's two big shapes. We've got the house, which is three distant uh, trees. That's four shapes. And then the reflections, five shapes, five big shapes. Uh, now there's more to it than that, but in terms of getting your placement right on the canvas, that's all we're really looking for. Okay, yeah, let's get underway with step two now. I've just put out more ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson, and yellow ochre and titanium white. So we're going to start off with our darkest darks. Now our darkest darks really sit in this foliage here and a little bit in here. So basically to get those, we're just going to use our ultramarine blue and our lizard and crimson, and we're just going to mix up a nice dark, lots of paint, big brush. See that? That's a big brush. And just block it in. So this step two is all about just blocking in our darks and getting a values pattern um, going. And, uh, you know, um, getting rid of all that white canvas, right? uh, which can scare the odd artist or two, right? Um, it's always good to get rid of the white canvas because then you feel like you're underway it's going to go slightly uh, bluer, so a little bit cooler in tone here, right? Um, and we're just going to rough this in there. Don't make this a nice, neat um, edges on this. See that? I'm just going to scrub it round deliberately so that it's not too neat. If you have a nice rounded edge, it might look right. Trust me, I, I know that because I've painted the willow trees at Monet's garden oh, so many times. <laughs> um, you know, like. When I first went there, I was on a bit of a Monet painting binge and um, it was awesome. 
but I, you know, painted the willow trees too neat. Okay, so look at the edges on that. That's an important lesson is to understand edges and shapes. Um, now we've got our reflections in here and here. So I'll, again, I'll just get more of that dark tone. Okay, might even pop a little touch of yellow in there just to get touch on the green side. Why? Because, you know, we need it's a bit more forward. We need a little bit of a shift. Now, when you paint your reflections in, paint them up and down like this. Important. Okay. Because then when we paint the uh, water lilies that way, they're going to look more realistic. Trust me. Now, this is just a block in. We will come back and we'll work on this. Notice my embankment's darker than the reflection dark. Okay, so there's a little bit of white in that uh, in that mix there. That's okay. We're going to put a layer of nice greens and so on in here. That's looking a little bit blue at the moment, but we'll just run with it and see where where it takes us. Um, get a little bit of a shift here. A little bit more of the yellow and red in that mix there now. Let's scrub that in. here and there just to break up your edges okay good around on this side here a little touch in there a little touch in there okay now we've got mid tones and highlights to come yet so we can uh, adjust those edges when we get to that step which will be in step three Okay, but that's looking good. Now, let's go a little touch darker in blue now. I'll mix it to one side. Notice I'm mixing it to the edge there rather than fully into that puddle because now I've got a reference point. That was what I used up higher. This is my tone that I'm going to use down lower here, right? Um, closer to us. This is way off in the distance. This is at our feet because we're standing on this embankment over here. So let's just work some of that in. Just tap it in around the edges of the reflection. Well, I think that brings us to the end of step two. Pretty quick and easy, right? We've established our darkest darks, got a nice value structure going on. We'll come back and we'll do the house, you know, in step three. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the way that it's going. You know, visually straight away looking at that, I can see that the value structure is right and um, we're looking good. So we'll, uh, we'll leave, leave this to completely dry off. And then after the break, you know, an hour of time, we'll come back and we'll work on step three. Now I've done step one and two pretty quickly, you probably notice, right? It hasn't taken us long at all. This painting is all about slowing down into step three. And we're going to work in the details, the highlights, the finishing touches. That will take quite a bit longer because there is a little bit of you know, detail in this painting. We're not going to go for all the detail, but we'll go for enough of it to make this a really nice representation of Monet's house and hopefully one he'd be proud of. But hey, we're not Monet, so don't worry about that aspect of it. So let's have a break and I'll, uh, I'll see you for step three after the break. Okay, welcome back now. Step number three in the more method of painting. This is all dried off quite nicely. It's looking good and we're good to go now um, to really start to get in the details and the highlights and so on. So pretty excited about the way this one's going. It's a, it's a great little subject, I think. Uh, so let's have a look at our palette. I'll put out fresh paint, ultramarine blue, lizard crimson, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium's fine with a bit of white in it. Um, and titanium white and we're good to go. So we're going to start off with this uh, main willow tree here. We're going to start off with mid tone. So I'll get some of this ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson. We'll just swirl that around together. Okay. Little touch of the cad yellow light for the moment. 
um, we'll put some highlights on it. Now, willow trees tend to be sort of droopy, so I'm just going to allow my brush just to um, just to droop. <laughs> Don't want to get it too uh, too thick and clumpy. Um, so just be mindful of that. Whoop, like that bit there. If it happens, it happens. You know, we can paint over pretty much everything. There's a fair bit of dark just in there, in this section in here. So we'll just um, work around that. And bring it into the center there. A little bit of work here. Not too much. But just a, a little bit of this tone mimicked into the water there. Doesn't have to be exact as above, but what's good to do is to get a little bit of broken color like so with this yellow ochre and just to vary it up a little bit. Okay. But again, I don't want to, don't want to overdo that. I want that to sit in the background. And when we strengthen up this main building here, you know, that will sit in the background, so that'll be fine. Uh, now, along here, we can probably just go a slightly warmer tone, so a little bit more of the cad yellow, a little pinhead of the red, just to vary the tone up a bit. And some of this is overhanging here, so it's sort of overhanging the water. Get a few different things happening in there. Some bits of light hitting in there. It's shooting up that way. I'll, I'll just warm up some of this around the house here just so that that uh, pulls our attention to it a little bit. Monet's home, it's a pinky tone through the building there. So I'll just use this white and that little bit of alizarin and crimson. And it's that sort of earthy pinky tone, something like that. And a little touch of blue in there just to stop it being too punchy. Okay. And I'm gonna take it out to about there. Run that through there. Yeah, we'll take it out to there and I'll put some of that foliage back over, over it soon to anchor it there. Okay, so with that, the roof is a chocolatey brown. So I'll get yellow ochre, take the alizarin and crimson, take a little touch of the blue We'll mix that around and we'll go, how do we go? Not very close. Needs more blue. So that's a bit too warm there. We're going for a, uh, it's more of a slaty color. So if we cool it down, okay, it's gonna send it quite gray. See that? It's now gone gray, it's a too dark a gray though. If I pop that there, it's definitely a chocolatey brown. Probably needs more blue. Okay, and then it needs to be lightened off. There we go, so that's starting to get it, isn't it? Okay, understanding how to mix your color is so, so important. Um, that's why I recorded the color mixing course. For that very reason. If you haven't got a copy of the color mixing course, I highly recommend it. It's probably been our most popular course outside of the free learn to paint course um, because it's basic skills that you need as an artist pretty hard to do without knowing how to mix your color like so so that's a little bit warmer it'll bring it forward of everything else okay so now here's the trick or well, not the trick but the bit that's going to make this work really well is going to now be laying over here our um the water lilies okay so further away from us they're going to be flatter the um the aperture of the face you know when they're further away is going to be more like that to us and then as they get closer to us they're going to open up so they're going to become wider so we're going to start off with ultramarine blue yellow ochre pinhead of the alizarin crimson 
and a little bit of the cad yellow light and we're getting a mid-tone in there first. Now see how that color's all broken up there, this one? That's good, okay, don't lose that. I'll just pull a little bit of paint out. We want that sort of broken color with this. And then we're going to start and we're just going to, okay, so it's not quite light enough. A little bit of white, see how you can't see it there? Need it to be a bit lighter than that. So a bit more cad yellow light. Okay. Let's just try that again, that's better. So now we can see that. And I'm just going to lay in little touches using the palette knife of um, patches of these water lilies. And by laying them horizontally across the reflections, it's gonna push those reflections right back into, um, you know, to look like that they're in the water. And all the people, when you do this, will be amazed. I think you're a genius. They'll go, wow, you're painting interesting. How did you paint those ref reflections like that? Because yeah. they won't know that you put the reflections in first and then put the water lilies on. <laughs> it's a little out of secret, that one. We'll start this one out in the sky and we'll just get them a little bit bigger as they come closer to us. Need a touch more white in there. We need more cad yellow, more, more yellow ochre, a bit of that orange. Okay. Okay. Now these little uh, lily pads, they get these nice little white and pink flowers. So the key here is don't overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> little hint of color, right? So I'm going to take the white here and I'm just going to tap out just the end like so and just here and there I'm just going to um, get a few indications of it. Okay. Okay, now I picked up a bit of the underpaint there so come back in and get a little bit more of this white here now. And if it does get a little bit dirty, that's okay. I don't mind that. We don't want it pure white everywhere. Okay, and then I'll take some of this pink that we use in the house. And um, we'll just flick in a few little touches of that as well. There's some little flowers. Less is usually more with this. Um, I really recommend that you don't overdo it, that you put in some and then we'll go and work on other areas of the painting and then we can come back and just assess whether it needs any more. But can you see how that reflection in the water is now sitting right back? You know, it's, it looks like it's underneath the lilies, which of course it is. So I'll just take some cad red on the brush there and we shall Sign it and I'll pop this up on eBay. So if you want to have the original painting from this TV show, so that you can study it, look closer at it and work out what's going on. <laughs> and if you do work out, let me know. Um, then yeah, this will be up on eBay and uh, I'll probably start the auction for this one, 99 cents. And you might end up with a bit of a bargain, but it's come up pretty good. Let's take off the tape. Okay, so there's our photo. And there's our painting. And I think we've done a, a pretty reasonable job in a short amount of time. You know, again, it's, it's a quick little demo that we're, we're working on. Um, and 
I think, you know, it's come up pretty close. Overall, it's a good little painting. You, um, you know, if you spend a little bit more time and the oil painting version of this, which I showed you at the start of the show, um, you yeah, know, obviously I spent maybe eight to 10 hours getting that one right. Uh, it's exactly the same process as what we've done here. I've just done this a little bit faster and uh, with a little bit less care because, you know, time limits for filming the show. Uh, but if you took your time a little bit more, you could achieve a similar result and, uh, and better. You know, I think that's the real thing. You could probably do a better version of this for yourself. And that would make a great painting to have at home to frame or to sell in, you know, in an art show or something like that. And uh, you'd be pretty excited to have done that one. And you can do it. That's the thing I want to get across to you. You know, I've just shown you some really simple steps. We've used a really simple palette of a few colors. And uh, you can absolutely do this at home. So there we go. Um, have a look on my eBay account if you're interested in bidding on this one. And then you can have it at home and copy it directly. And uh, which is not a bad idea. Um, just go to eBay and search for Rod Moore Art and you'll find me there. And uh, make sure you, if you haven't done so already and you want to learn to paint, you know, using the three simple steps that I've showed you, then go to our uh, Learn to Paint Academy. So that's www.learntopaint.academy and register for the free course there. And um, I'll show you the steps in a bit more detail. And make sure you also go and check out all the other episodes at Learn to Paint TV, www.learntopaint.tv. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I certainly have. Monet's Home in Giverny, one of my favorite subjects. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you next time on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.